Lawyers have filed more than 500 individual lawsuits since the blast. Right now, litigation is in the early stages with pretrial hearings happening jointly in Orange County. This allows lawyers on both sides to talk logistics. This week, TPC told us under its voluntary claims program, it has settled more than 5,000 homeowner claims. TPC also says it reimbursed more than 18,000 residents for evacuation-related expenses. So what caused the TPC explosion? It's a question that's gone unanswered. But a federal report released last month offers some crucial information about what went wrong a year ago. 12 News investigator Lauren Hensley is with us live tonight, breaking down what we know. Jordan, the U.S. Chemical Safety Board released a 13-page report detailing the timeline and what happened in the moments leading up to the TPC explosion. While it doesn't state the root cause, it's a step forward in understanding what happened. Chaos and confusion in Mid-County. One year later, federal officials have a better idea of what went wrong. They say right before the plant caught fire, about 6,000 gallons of liquid vapor, mostly butadiene, escaped from one of the processing towers at the TCP plant in Port Natchez. Two minutes later, the plant was on fire. We spoke with attorney Eric Knoll, who was representing victims of the TPC explosion when the report was released last month. The main things that we were going to be looking at early on was the popcorning. That's industry speak for something also known as popcorn polymers. They can form in equipment when oxygen and butadiene react. Eight days before the explosion, TPC installed temporary filters to catch any popcorn polymer chunks, according to this report. TPC maintains it's still too early to know the exact cause. The Port Natchez facility also had a history of air quality violations with the EPA. We looked into violations going back 10 years. TPC Group was fined $275,000 over the past 10 years. In one case, state regulars cited corrosion, an issue in several violations on a butadiene transfer line as the source of a leak. We also found out in TPC's past the facility was non-compliant with the Federal Clean Air Act every, every quarter since January 2017. Lauren Hensley, 12 News. Lauren, thank you. Our extensive coverage on the TPC aftermath continues now on 12newsnow.com and on our app. Just go to the As Seen on TV section and we'll link you to our prior stories.